Okay, in this video, we'll answer a question that came on my blog about FireMonkey image effects. That blog was on January 14th and the video for January 14th. And Yilmaz Yoru, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, asked how he could get a filter modified image and save it as another image. And so I'm going to show you how to do that here in this video. This is based on FireMonkey uh, filter effects. And on the Embarcadero doc wiki, there's a list of all the image effects and transitions that are available. So you can go to that page and see what they are. And in the January 14th video, I used components to use different effects at runtime. And in order to do more low level operations with filters, like saving the resulting bitmap, I need to use the filters themselves. And there's pages about applying FireMonkey image effects using the designer and at runtime using the components. There's also API documentation in DocWiki about all the different low-level classes that you can use uh, for filters. Two particular filter properties that I'm going to use. One is the input, which holds the bitmap, and the output property which will hold the output after the filter is applied. So I've built in a sample application, and let's load that project. And this project is a C++ Builder XE3 project that runs on Windows 32, Win64, and Macintosh OS X. I've got a track bar at the top for setting the amount of filtering to take place, and that's a value from 0 to 1, so it's a percentage of. And I've set the maximum of the track bar to be 100. I've got two buttons, one for opening a bitmap and one for saving a filtered bitmap. I have two images on the user interface, one for loading the bitmap and one for holding the filtered bitmap. I've got the save filtered bitmap button disabled because I only want it to show up once I've actually opened a bitmap and there's something to save. I've got an open dialog and a save dialog with uh, filters for JPEG and PNG and then opening up uh, all bitmap files that you might want to process. Also in the source code, I have a header file. Let's go and look at the declaration of my form. And inside my form are the declaration of the buttons and the images and the dialog boxes and the track bar. I've also down in the public area have declared uh, my own sepia filter, which is of type T filter sepia. And that sepia filter is going to be the one that I use in code to apply the sepia effect and also to be able to set the input and output bitmaps for the filter so that I can save the result to a file and also see it in the user interface. To allocate the sepia filter that I'm going to use, I hook the event on form create. So when the form is created, I will instantiate that sepia filter uh, into my variable my sepia filter. And then on the open button, I'll open dialog, I'll call its execute method. And if I choose a picture, then I'm going to say image one bitmap load from file, that file name that came from the open dialog. I'm going to enable the save button because I now have an image to save. I'm going to set the input property of my sepia filter to be image one's bitmap. And then I'm going to set the sepia filter amount, so the amount of or percentage of sepia equal to the current track bar value divided by 100. Because remember, the amount property is from 0 to 1. Then I'm going to set image 2 bitmap equal to my CP filter, the output of that. So the input gets the bitmap I chose. The filter gets applied to a certain amount of sepia. And then the, I can pull the output and display it in the user interface in the image 2 area. For the track bar, I have an on change event. And the on change event simply sets the amount of sepia that is processed and I'll set again the output of the filter and set that into my image so we'll see the amount of sepia changing uh, in the user interface and then finally on the save dialog I call the execute method if I don't hit cancel and I choose a file to save then I'm going to take the image to bitmap call save to file and use the file name that came from the dialog box so the real work happens right here simply in using getting the CPS filters output property and that I have a, the CPU filter connected to my input bitmap and that I'm changing the amount uh, by changing the track bar. So let's look at this in action on 32-bit windows. Let's open a bitmap. Let's choose these beautiful penguins. 
And now I can move the track bar and notice that image two is getting the output of the filter. And then I can say, save filtered bitmap, choose a file. And now I've saved the contents of the sepia effect on these penguins. Now let's go and look and make sure that it really happened. Let's go and preview. And sure enough, there's the penguins with a little bit of sepia effect. This runs on 64-bit windows. So we'll compile and run it. And again, open a bitmap. Let's choose this lighthouse. And let's uh, apply a lot more sepia to it. And we'll save it out. And then finally choose Macintosh and run it over on the Mac. And we can open a bitmap. And I've got some pictures stored over here. A uh, nice Golden Gate Bridge setting. And then apply the filtering amount. And then save it back as something else. And again, if I go and look at my demo photos area, I've got this sepia applied to the image. And that's how easy it is to use effect filters in your own code in C++ Builder, XZ3, and FireMonkey.